G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Specs. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video called, Is Marriage Worth It For Men? And this is by a uh, YouTuber called John Griffin. Um, so go over, check him out. He's a smaller YouTuber. So if you enjoy this video, uh, go sub, like, comment on his videos as well, guys. Um, let's get started. I think that when men consider the consequences of voluntarily surrendering their freedom to an institution like marriage, they are thinking that their benefits outweigh the um, consequences or the, uh, the negatives. And I would argue that it's not the case in most, for most people. I'm sure there are some people out there who would argue the opposite, and I've actually gotten some comments from some guys that are really happily married, but that is the... Uh, the unicorn, that's the one yep. in a million. Yep. The um, vast majority of guys, after say 10 years of marriage is usually a good amount of time, they realize that they have made a devil's bargain. Yep. That they have freely given up their autonomy in exchange for what they thought was going to be a partnership with a best friend who they could have sex with. And what they ended up with was a, um, a manager slash boss at home uh, who has got lots of psychological and emotional problems, who doesn't do anything the way you would do it, and that you feel beholden to because as a man, we feel a sense of loyalty to our family and our wives, and we feel like it's our job to protect them and honor them in all those ways. I think absolutely, and I think that's a really good point that he makes, but it's also, guys lose their identity a lot of the time uh, in marriage as well. You sort of start going along with the flow, towing the line with what the wife wants to do with her family, her friendship group, then your side of things, you know, your friends, family get put into second place, third place, fourth place, your hobbies, uh, the things you like to do in your spare time, your recreation, that's all seen as just stupid stuff. You know, you shouldn't be doing that. If you do do it, you're gonna get nagged to not do it, do other things be more productive, go fix the gutters or whatever it is, guys. You know, that's the thing. Guys who have been married or had long-term girlfriends, put in the comments, if you're trying to enjoy your hobby, whatever it may be, you're in the house, you might like fixing up cars, you might like playing video games, you might like playing with music, whatever it is, right? Playing guitars, drums, whatever it is. And you're doing that and then you get this buzzard flying around telling you you can't do it or you should be doing something else. You're making you feel guilty for enjoying your own spare time and hobbies. That's what you have to look forward to. So I think the reason, guys, why I'm sharing this video is, yes, there are a lot of us who have been through it. This is a more mature man than me, being his 50s old, say. Um, and he's giving his account of things from experience. And I want to share that with some of the younger guys or more of the, it doesn't so much mean young, but men who are inexperienced and might fall into some other traps. Unfortunately, those sentiments are not reciprocated from your wife in many, many cases. They see you as part of the landscape, part of the furniture, and you can be replaced. So just know that is what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Let's go down here, guys. Come here, Shelby. Shelby, this way. I think a bomb's gonna drop in Vietnam over there. Come on, Johnny boy. You know, even some of the most successful women who have great careers are really, really quick to pull the trigger on having kids because I think that secretly they all want to be stay-at-home moms. Or not all, but a lot of them do. They want to be stay-at-home moms. And here's where the irony comes in. So they make a choice. Most men don't want to have babies. Let's, let's be honest, guys. I mean, I didn't grow up playing with baby dolls. That's true, right? And the thing about the stay-at-home mum thing, it isn't so much they want to be stay-at-home mums. Maybe that's a big thing in America. I haven't seen it so much in Australia, but that's what Australian women want to do. But I think it's more, women don't think about any sort of financial status, um, like how you're going with money, do you have, can you afford it at the moment? You know, are you going to be scraping by? Are you going to be struggling if you do have the kid? They don't care, they just want the kid. They don't give us stuff about all the details. Just give me the kid. Right? Then they go on maternity leave, there's one pay missing, you're paying all these things, um, like in childcare in the future, hundreds of dollars a day, whatever it is. Um, prams, for whatever reason, don't ask me why, I've never understood this. Biggest scam in history, prams that cost like $5,000 and these chicks fucking buy them and it's like a fashion accessory. But this guy's right. If I never had a child, 
children, I'm sorry to say this out loud, but if I didn't have a child in my life, I think I would still be okay. I'd be whole. I think I'd still get through day to day. Um, but women, you know, it's something biological. They want it. They want children uh, in a big way. When they do, and I know some women don't, but for those women who want them, they really want them. So here's what happens. This is where the, um, the law gets involved. So you and your wife come to an agreement about having a child, and as a part of that agreement, one of you's got to stay home with this baby, or you're going to have to get daycare. And yeah. daycare is crazy expensive. I mean, it's yeah. just crazy expensive. And there's all kinds of, you know, concerns about bringing illnesses into your household and what kind of people they're going to be exposed to. I mean, you, you can just make yourself neurotic thinking about it. So one of you's going to stay home. Maybe you're going to have more than one kid. If you go two kids, my God, you're going to have to make a lot of money to cover daycare. So you, it makes a lot of sense economically to stay home, have someone stay home with the kids. So now, fast forward 20 years, and oh, lo and behold, she's not happy. The kids are grown and gone. They're off in college, and she's not happy. And as you know, it's your fault that she's not happy because that's just the way that goes. So you find yourself in court, and you've got a lawyer, and she's got a lawyer, and she's telling the judge why she's not happy. And um, you, you've come to an agreement. Now, the judge is going to give her child support, probably, because she's going to get the kids in most cases. It wasn't in my case, but in most cases, she's going to get the kids. So that's going to cost you about 500 bucks a kid. And Well, oh, gee, if you're lucky, but really, I think I think it comes off a calculation of, of off your wage. Well, my friend Larry, I always talk about him. He's getting absolutely shafted on child support. And he pays spousal support because she never worked. And he lost all his stuff. He had a house paid off. Owned it outright, guys. He had to remortgage it to its market value. And he had to pay his ex-wife out some stupid amount of money. Six or six hundred thousand dollars or something stupid. Plus half of his superannuation. Plus they had his savings account with money in it. And she took the whole lot. That was like part of the deal. And he's just out renting. And he was only married for 15 years. But yeah, he had the two kids and he's trapped with her now. He's trapped with that woman in his life for all of his life. So you guys who haven't done it yet, you've got to think about these things down the line. Are you willing to take a risk of this potential eventuality? I'm not. And that's why, guys, as well, I'm, I chose not to have children because I saw all these things happening with guys who had kids going through really bad divorces um, I saw it when I was a kid. Uh, my, my parents, like, it wasn't that bad for me. I didn't really care. But, you know, I saw things from the inside. And I thought, yeah, it's probably not for me. And I've, as this guy said, I, I never sit around thinking I want to have kids. Uh, but that's my personal opinion, guys. That's for me. So I know there are a lot of guys out there. You've got kids, you love them. And that's awesome. I think kids are great. Just not for me. And I never thought that I actually wanted them. If they're you know, still young enough. And then um, she's going to get alimony. And this is what's really funny. So the alimony is to compensate her for the loss in the potential career she could have had if she had not been raising children. Now, let me go back to my first statement. You guys probably don't want kids. She wants the kids. You would probably rather just be a happy, loving couple, each making tons of money and taking lavish vacations and buying big houses and driving fancy cars. Sounds good to me. That's what you could have done. But if you have children, your whole lifestyle gets scaled back. So you're going to have a much more scaled back lifestyle. Um, it's going to cost you a ton of money to have children. Yeah, so having kids is very, very expensive. And then you got to feed them, clothe them, and then if they're smart enough, you get to send them to college. Have you seen what colleges cost? Oh my God, you could be easily be in the hole for um, half a million dollars, maybe a million dollars by the time your kids get old enough to go to school. Um, yeah, it's, it's an expensive proposition. And going back to my earlier statement, right now it's all your money. You get to choose everything and how it's spent and how you yep. live your life and what yep. things you want to spend it on. You get married to a woman who wants to have children now, there's a lot of wonderful things about it, and it could be great, and you could get a lot of you know, wonderful life experiences from it. I don't want to take that away completely. But from a financial perspective, it's going to cost you a fortune. Yeah. And it's really a flip of a coin if in 20 or 25 years, she decides that she's not happy and wants to, wants to leave you, and then the court system gets involved, 
And then, 20 or 25 years, dude. Like five years, two years, three years, six months. I've had live stories that I've told that these things happen. Like women are having young kids. I know uh, people in my, my own network where the woman had, like they've got like a fucking one-year-old and she's divorced him. <laughs> like, like you just, it's, not, it's not 25 years. It can happen at any moment. It determined arbitrarily that she deserves to be compensated for having raised the children, even though it was her idea to begin with, and she didn't really want to work in the beginning anyway. So, yeah, you get screwed twice on that one. Lower lifestyle and then half your money going forward. I guess you can call it keeping up with the Joneses, but that's just for lack of a better term. Women are hyper aware of what other people think. Hyper aware. And it means a lot to them. So, and I'm not just talking about like people you know, or, like your neighbors or your family or even the people in your town or your community. It's like everybody. It's like anyone. It's very true, guys. I'm not sure if you guys have, when you get divorced, right? It's, it, it's, it's like a PR exercise for them. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, shady sneaky things that happen to make them look good and to make you look bad regardless of the reason for why a split may have occurred it's a, it's very much a reputation protecting exercise and a discrediting um, and reputational damaging exercise of the man all right they'll they will air any dirty laundry they have to anyone who will listen i'll even add a little bit of mayonnaise on top to make you sound extra bad you you might have liked to have a couple of beers after work every night or a beer after work with dinner. You're an alcoholic all of a sudden, et cetera, et cetera, guys. You know, she saw um, a link to Bang Bros, right? She saw a link to Bang Bus or Fake Taxi on your phone. All of a sudden, you're a porn uh, addict, you know? Shit like that. And she'll tell anyone. She'll tell everyone. She'll lady down at the register at Coles. <laughs> yeah, classic. This guy's right. I like him. One in everyone's opinion matters and why does that affect you because you have to either spend money time or energy to adapt your lifestyle since it's also her lifestyle to whatever the latest greatest thing is whatever that is this sounds silly but it has dramatic and impactful results so on the silly side you're decorating your yard and your house for every season of the year on the uh serious side it can affect the way your children are raised which can be really really important you yeah. know um i'm not sure if you guys have ever lived with a woman who's very headstrong which is another word for c-u-n-t or i won't say the word but it's their way of the highway guys you cannot argue with them you cannot reason with a woman like that so whatever they want has to happen and because you've married it well you better play along with it buddy otherwise your life is going to be bad like your life is going to be bad so yeah. If your neighbor's kid is going to the, the fancy school, then guess what? That's going to be a problem if your kid's not going to the fancy school. So just prepare yourself for that. That also carries over to what cars she drives yeah. and what clothes she wears and all of that stuff. So just be aware. I think I owe this to social media. I think social media creates a, a real problem for women. I think that there needs to be some kind of an emotional test or a psychological test that people take before they're allowed to sign up for one of these apps because it definitely brings... No one will be on them, Johnny boy. I can tell you that much, buddy. Um, no one will be on those apps because the majority of the women that are on there um, are leftovers. And a lot of the guys that are on there are guys who are like me, who have been absolutely thrashed, been put through the ringer, and we're not emotionally available. We're all out there just trying to get some action, lying, saying what we got to say, Jason Bourning on them. We don't give a shit, right? So everyone's on there. Most people aren't on there with the right intention or at the right time of their life at the same time as the other person. So it's just carnage. It's just pure human nature, emotionally damaged people, um, emotionally damaged women and men who are risk averse. Because I don't, yes, yeah, sure, men can be emotionally damaged, but I call it risk averse because you've been burnt and you're not going to let it happen again. You're going to make sure that you're vetting really well. And so women will call you an emotionally damaged person or emotionally unavailable. I think that's the word. Emotionally unavailable uh, men. 
I think that's a positive. If you're being called emotionally unavailable, that's a good thing, mate. You're not doing what they want you to do. Um, and they're complaining about you, which is good. All right, guys, halfway through. If you're enjoying the content today, please subscribe to the channel. Aiming for 7,000 subscribers. And please watch the video through to the end. That's the, that's the way you can help this channel grow the most. The more you watch, uh, the more YouTube pushes it out to a wider audience. And if you do want to support the channel, please check out the Patreon um, in the uh, link in the pinned comment and in the description. All right, guys. He's out the crazy. All right, let's talk about moods, moodiness. This is, you know, a classic, and I think most men are aware that women are very moody. But when you live with a woman that's not your mother or your sister, when you live with a woman that you're trying to have a partnership with, and that mood changes, it can be um, really impactful on your life. So we've all heard of stories about, you know, PMS and how that can be problematic in a relationship and how that can change their mood crazy. But I think a lot of times many women are unaware that this biological hormonal change is occurring. And so if it happens to occur and coincide at a time when you guys are not in perfect agreement on something, it magnifies the frustration, anger and upset she has with you by and I'm trying not to be hyperbolic, but somewhere in the ballpark between 10 and 100 times. Mm. And it can, um, it can actually be one of the factors that leads to your split, so. Living his best life with his drone, man, he's living the dream, dude. This dude's been married, he's probably been absolutely smashed in a divorce court. He's got his drone, he's got his dogs, he's walking around, Sonny's on, living the dream out, he's enjoying the day out. He probably wouldn't be doing that if he was married, guys. He'd be out down at Costco, um, down at Tesco, Sainsbury's, whatever, wherever you're watching. He'd be down at Trader Joe's, Aldi here, or Coles, Woolworths, that's what he'd be doing. He'd be running around doing groceries, kids' sports, going to some stupid kid's birthday that he doesn't even know, that's friend, uh, that's the... Friend of the wife, and you got to go, and you got to stand in a park with some other dudes who don't want to be there. Watch kids play for three hours on a Sunday when you could be doing something you want to do. We know how it, is, uh, how it all is, guys. Now, if you're a one percent guy, like you're rich and good looking, you probably don't have to deal with this. But the rest of us do. What that means is that a woman married us knowing that we weren't ideal. We weren't the ideal choice for her. She really had someone else in mind. And she lets us know this subtly all the time. And that subtle reminder that you're not the right guy kind of does get under your skin. Now, you know, if you are, you know, a 10 out of 10, like you're rich and good looking and you're smart and you're compassionate and you are just that perfect alpha male, then let's go this way, guys. Then you're uh, you're not gonna have that experience. But for the 99% of us who are not that, yeah, we're gonna probably face that. Now, like I said, there are. I think every guy cops it. Even those top 1% guys, alpha male guys with all the money and that. Once you get married, it, it's the same. It's like you know, as we always say, it's like the Tom Brady's and you got Hulk Hogan and Shaquille O'Neal and people like Steve Harvey, mega rich guys, and he's a bit of a blue pillar, whatever. I don't normally like to use those terms, but that is what it is. You got so many wealthy, rich guys, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, right? Uh, the list goes on, right? It, it doesn't matter if you're that guy, doesn't mean you're immune. You're probably just gonna cop the same because you, you, you probably marry some higher class, higher class, which means, which I which, which equates to me is more trouble than they're worth, more expensive than what they're worth, no benefit, no value add to the man. And that's why they end up getting divorced to these women. Like, can you imagine getting divorced with someone like Angelina Jolie, like Brad Pitt has to put up with? Can you imagine that? They're making out he's this real bad guy. I'm sure maybe who knows what he does, right? You never know what really happens. But it's just marketing on the side of women in the news how, how much of an asshole Brad Pitt is and Angela Jolie's an angel who's, you know, po obviously poisoning the children against him. I won't get started on that. But they've all changed their last names, taken Pitt out of their name, and it's now Jolie. So he's a cautionary tale as well. But yeah, I digress, guys. Women who are not like that, so I'm just going to leave that caveat there. But when you are not that 
that first choice. The things you get to deal with are just the need to prove that you deserve the relationship you have with the woman that you're with, which seems really, really weird. So there are tons and tons of little things that just come up that are gonna be different if you get into a committed relationship than they are when you're dating. So when you're dating, everything's kind of a negotiation. Say like you're gonna to go to a movie, you wanna see movie A, she wants to see movie B, and you guys negotiate, maybe you see movie A this week and movie B next week, whatever. No problem, everything's cool, everyone's happy. When you're in a committed relationship, um, the truth is going to come out. Like, for example, you're going to find out that your wife really, really, really hates horror movies or really, really hates movies that have violence and gore, and she just can't go to those anymore. Those are just off the table from now on. Like, she just can't do it. It's just emotionally upsetting to her, whatever. Next thing you know, you're watching a lot of rom-coms. Yeah. And then <laughs> your quality of life, even if it's a little thing, and you're thinking right now, John, you're really overstating this stuff. This is all kind of bullshit. No, after a while, it really just wears you out. It's like, no, it's please, true. somebody, just let me make it. Young boys, take heed of what this man is saying. A choice. So I haven't even gotten into some of the, the typical things that just go wrong with people in stressful situations like alcoholism or drug addiction or just mental health issues that inevitably crop up. And you as the husband having to deal with that can be a huge, huge issue because when those things happen, you know, the financial burden increases significantly because you're gonna lose one income if you're just making an income now. And emotionally and psychologically, it gets very, very tough. Or God forbid, you know, something should happen in your industry or in your career or whatever, and um, your job goes away and you need to start over and do your own thing or you just open a business, or you need to you know, start over with your, your career training. You may find that when the lifestyle is threatened, that that lifestyle is more important to your wife than you are. Yep. As to they say, and Coach Greg Adams will say, um, women are dream killers. Like if, and Tom Lakers, Tom Lakers said that, sorry. Women are dream killers. You know, they, they're more concerned about the safety net. Right. So if you're going to say, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to start a business or I'm going to start a YouTube channel, right? And I'm going to focus on that. And I want to become a full time YouTuber when you've got zero to start with, but you've got a comfy job, a job that probably kills your soul every day, etc. They're not going to be supportive of that most of the time. A real gem woman will be supportive of that. But most guys, no, you're putting it at risk. You got to pay for kids. You got to pay for them. What about this? What about that? Guys, like, have, you ever, have you ever talked about an investment or something with a, a girlfriend or a wife or something when, when you've been living together and they they get scared? You talk, oh, I'm going to buy some cryptocurrency. They shit their pants. Oh, I'm going to buy a property. Oh, it's going to go down. Oh, Most of them will shit their pants. They don't want the money to be at risk. They want the money to be able to be spent and to be accessed. So that's another thing, guys. If you're going to be the kind of guy who's not driving the ship and not making choices especially when it comes to investments, like especially even if you are doing that and you're in a couple, you can't just go and take someone else's money. It's joint money. Even if it is your money you're earning and you've got a stay-at-home girlfriend or wife and you're a de facto, well, you're screwed. Like you got to let, you got to get the sign off for them for what you can do with your money and risks that you can take. So guys, if you want to make something of yourself and you haven't done it yet, getting married or having long-term girlfriends is probably not going to be the best way to go about it because you'd be pressured into not doing it. I knew a guy who was a streamer he was doing quite well. He played video games and stuff, and he was really good at it. But you know, he wasn't making enough yet. That was a full time job. And he got this girlfriend, and she convinced him just to go and start go back to his here. He was a tradie before, so guys, a tradesperson. He was a plumber, and so his his girlfriend shamed him, saying he needs to grow up and stop doing this stupid video game thing and go and get a job. And he did, and so he dropped his dream. So you never know where he could have ended up. He could have been big. Maybe maybe he wouldn't have. But he doesn't know that. All right, that's opportunities that, that, that can be missed, especially when you're young guys that have a compounding impact on your life as you get older. And a lot of guys make decisions around women and girlfriends. Please don't do that because you'll regret it when you do get a bit older and look back. Consider that. So I like having dogs. In fact, I have a house full of animals. So I've got three dogs. 
a stray cat that now lives with me. My daughter has um, a whole basement full of small animals, bunnies, she had chinchillas. I think we have a hedgehog down there. Um, she's got three birds living down there. And yeah, they, they make a mess. And yeah, our house probably doesn't smell ideal. In fact, one of the primary reasons my wife gave me for leaving was she didn't like the hair that the dogs left on the floor. Wow. And when my uh, a dog I had had for 17 years passed away, her initial thought was, we're not getting any more animals. And my initial thought was, mm, he was here before you were. Like yep. the dog thing, that was pre-existing condition. That's going to happen. That's going to stay. So maybe he's gone, but someone just like him is coming to take his place. Good Speaking shit, of dogs. So if you're single and you're living in your own place, you have control over everything. You got control of your furniture. You got control over the dishes. You got control over, you know, everything in your house. Well, when you get married, hmm. You're going to relinquish that control. You're going to find yourself as a um, tenant in your own house. Yep. And that means you will not have landlord authority to make significant changes to property and you will have to pass it through the boss before you get anything done. Uh, going back to finances, you know, and we were talking about them in relationship to children and how much money they cost. Having your own money and being able to make your own decisions and buy things that you want like a car or a house or a vacation or whatever, you really do lose full authority over that. Everything really does need to be. You can tell this dude's just gotten out of jail, right? Like marriage jail. The jail warden's gotten rid of him. She's uh, thrown him onto the heap. And he's just out of nature, loving his life with his drone, making YouTube videos. Good on him. So guys, if you haven't already, go check him out. Give him a sub. He's growing. He's a little bit bigger than me, actually. But I think this guy will pop off. I think if he keeps making good videos like this. I think it's really good for young guys and to also resonate with men who have also been through it be done in concert and um, yeah that's a lot to give up that's a lot of freedom that you give up so keep in mind that marriage was created about like five or six maybe 600 years ago for the purposes of um, keeping families together to so that single mothers weren't running around with lots of children that needed to be fed and so we needed to have an authority to help keep men in the picture to feed everybody. Yeah. And um, you know, that was at a time when women were completely dependent on men. They had no rights at all. They couldn't work. So having a man involved really was important for defense, for safety, for security, for all of those things. Well, that's changed. We don't, we don't need to be involved in this scenario anymore. Um, there are lots of ways, if you just think out of the box, that you can have a uh, long-term relationship with a woman and potentially even raise a family without getting married. I mean, you can create legal contracts to account for almost any situation where both parties agree what the provisions and the limitations. Yeah, but that's the thing, Johnny, 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 like these things can be disputed heavily um, and get thrown out pretty quick. So while guys think they can circumvent the system, the system's there, and it cannot in most cases be circumvented. You're going you're gonna to find that out. If a woman wants to say, yeah, I won't, you know, I'll never take any money off you. If, you know, if you, 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 know, if you buy a house, the other say, I'll, I'll take what I put in. And you hear that bullshit, right? And then when you do get divorced or there's a big breakup, then they start going for more because they can, because they're going to benefit at your expense. And that's when they start arguing and get lawyers and then lawyers start gassing their heads up, putting bad ideas in their heads. They've got the other girlfriends telling them what happens. No, you should get more. No, you get what you're worth, girl, blah, blah, blah. Boom. All of a sudden, she's gone from being a, a reasonable human to wanting to extract as much most as possible from your dying husk of a corpse before you're discarded. And that's, that, that, that's what happens, guys. I know it sounds negative, but it is what happens on the back end. ...are of that contract. And I would strongly recommend that you do that. I think the, the need for marriage has, has ended. I don't think we have a need for that in our society anymore. I think that um, people are fully capable of coming to an agreement about how they want to live their lives as two responsible adults. And neither party is going to be disadvantaged. Each party can get what they want from the relationship. And there's no need to get the state involved. At least, that's my thought now. 
All right, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's all I have for you today. So guys, yeah, go check John out. I think he's a good creator. John Griffin um, is his name, his handle on YouTube. Go check him out, give him a like. Um, he seems to be growing pretty rapidly. I think maybe some other channels might have covered him too. So guys, yeah, John, show your appreciation um, um, for him sort of bearing all, right? Um, and putting this information out there for you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.